Hey there, it's Crafty Jennabug. Here's another installation of me working in this March junk journal. I'm having a lot of fun, so let's jump right in. All right, I'm gonna move this to the side real quick because I have an idea. So I've got a piece of thin cardstock and I have a container of scraps. And what I'm gonna do is use Liquitex matte gel to glue down a bunch of scraps, different layers, and then basically kind of make a collage master board out of this so that I can cut it to make tags and um, belly bands and things like that. So that is the plan. I'm going to start with some bigger pieces. I've got, you know, dyed book pages tea bags, like, oh, I went through my my little thing of scraps and just kind of went nuts. I have packing paper, I have all sorts of things in here. Paper towel that I use to clean up. Actually, that would be cool, too. In some small doses. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of glue things down and go nuts. I'm going to start with the bigger pieces. I also have lace in here that I've dyed and all sorts of things. I gotta let this dry really well. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna come back and stamp directly on it. There are a couple of places that are a little blank that might look good to have some. Probably should have done that before I started gluing down the stamped images. One thing to note, it is important if you're using this method um, and you're using stamped images that you use permanent ink because otherwise you're going to end up smearing I just realized I didn't use any of this. Alright, now I'm going to let this dry. I kind of want to add a couple squirts. Just a couple of... I should have, Again, I should have done it before I added the stamped images. I'm just using a little piece of paper to pick up some of it. And that's now collage fodder. I think I will take a little bit of peeled paint and do the same.
I'm going to do the same with mowed lawn. And a couple of places with mustard seed. And a couple of splatters of wild honey. I better let this dry before I mess it up. I'm happy with it, so I should leave it alone. <laughs> Alright, we're going to let this dry and we'll be back. Alright, this is dry. And I really like it. Backing it on the cardstock was a good idea. That way it stays pretty um, sturdy. I really like this. Just got to figure out now what I want to do with it. I thought about how this part would be a really cool, this section here would be a cool belly band. Unfortunately, it's in the middle of everything. <laughs> But you cut it like here, and that would be about the height of the tallest page. Tallest pages. Let's see. Yeah, to like here. All right, so I decided I'm going to make put the belly band on this page, but in order to figure out how tall I need it to be, I've got to line it up. Roughly there. Actually, I could do it this way. I could make it shorter. It might be fun. Why not make it shorter? It's a chaotic journal, right? <laughs> see how well this will cut. And then I have all of these I can make tags out of. That one's already kind of a tag. Boop. A little journal card. Awesome. All right, this is the page I decided to put it on. I also sewed some of that funky green like lace ribbon, folded over, and some um, brownish, well, some aged lace. I didn't dye it, but it looks like it's seen some age. So I thought it would look really cool like that, and then this way, this is poking up and you can see it from the top, almost like a crown. But it felt a little chaotic that way. I might glue another piece of lace down here, but before I do that, let's glue this down. Adding the thing on the top also makes it look like it is the right height. I don't want it to go all the way to the bottom. You know what I mean? Like it looks more intentional that it's not the same height as the page. There we go. While that dries, I decided I want this tag to go in it. To go in the uh, belly band. I, think, I don't know, I just think that yellow really makes it look good. Let's see. But... I want to add an eyelet and I want to sew around it, so I think I will do that. And I'll be back. Alright, so this is what I did. I sewed around it the remaining strings. I put this bead on. It looked like honey, and honey in the, it's cut like honeycomb almost. So I thought it would be really cool on there. And then I had this crazy no boundaries. Um, eyelash yarn with these like brown pieces in it. Can you see that? Yeah, with these like brown pieces woven in. And I don't know, it kind of worked. I probably should have used black thread to sew around it, but I didn't feel like changing it out. So it can go 
in there the bead hangs down so that it is not in you know like being bulk essentially it'll stick out I like that now for this I found my focal point y'all so I have this little die cut from the other day when I was playing with my Cricut and I have uh, and I put together a magazine flower and I sewed it together it is a little off oh well too late now and I started the oh you can't see so what I did to make this is I put the two flower pieces together and the button and then I took my needle that was threaded and I started it in this hole this way so that I would have a string I left about that much of a string so that I could tie it and I went in and then across and in again and then up one at this hole and across and then back up this hole so that when I tied it it would look a little bit more neat even though I'm going for chaotic so I think I will put it here. I don't want to block the bird entirely. Alright, while this page dries, I'm going to work on this page. And what I have planned for it is I'm going to turn this into a pocket. But before I do, I want to do a little stenciling. I'm going to do that and I'm going to use vintage, fo vintage photo. So that is what that looks like. I'm going to glue this down and then I'm going to glue this here as a tuck spot here. So I'll be back. All right, please ignore the sound of the dryer. It, uh, it's laundry day again. <laughs> the never ending cycle that is laundry. Anywho, this is now dry got my tuck spot and I've got my pocket. I found this little die I made. Uh, I had it was a piece of it was cut out of a piece of beige cardstock. I decided I did not want it to be beige so I used a mixture of Mode Lawn and Twisted Citron Distress Sprays and it has this beautiful effect going on. Nice modeled coloration. And I want it to go right here so that it hangs off the page and acts as a little like, um, what you call it? It's page tab. So then it will be seen peeking out from the other side. And I decided I also want something here to kind of hold it down. I pulled out these, I guess I should have shown you, I pulled out these stickers I got from the Dollar Tree. I wanted something round, but I was, I thought about playing with some hot glue and making a like faux, oh, what's it called, a faux wax seal. But I don't know what I would use. I mean, a coin could work. I don't know. Let's see what these look like. Yeah, I really do want something round. So let's try that out. All right, I'm gonna try two different things to make imprints in a glob of hot glue in the attempt to replicate faux wax seals. One thing I've got is this coin from some point in my life it says good luck it also has my initials well what used to be my initials so I'm gonna try that I think I might try this side or I could try both sides and then I'm also going to try this dried zinnia flower 
so let's see how it goes. I've never done this before, so... Hopefully it works well. Well, it worked. I've got the imprint. It's hard to see. And I don't like these raised pieces. So let me see if I can maybe tape over them. Hmm. Yep, I had a feeling this would ruin the flower. It was a worthy sacrifice, I think. If it works out. If not, it won't be. Looks cool that way. All right, so that one was a fail, as I figured it might be, but I have a ton of those dried zinnias, so I wasn't really stressing it. This I'm excited about, but I don't, like I said, I don't like those raised bits. It looks better, but don't like how flat it is around it. Maybe I should have used less glue. Let's try less glue. Okay, I'm gonna go with that one. It is smaller, but it's the perfect size for what I wanted. All right, I'm gonna use this Delta Ceramco Gleams in metallic copper to paint over this. That is what it looks like painted. I'm gonna let it dry and then we will uh, affix it to the page. So I still have quite a bit of this paint and I'm waiting for the faux wax seal to dry. I decided I don't wanna waste the paint. I wanna go around this flower and gild the edges. Doesn't that look so cool? Yes, that's what we're doing. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, so there is the difference. I love it even more. I think that really brought it together. And I also decided I want to splatter some paint on this tag, more of this uh, copper color. I don't know, I'm going nuts. I'm just waiting for something to dry, so. Also, I have these two tags that are gonna go in this the big pocket. And maybe, maybe I wanna do something to them. Maybe not necessarily the paint. I think I've used enough paint for now. So, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use frayed burlap on the back of this one and vintage photo on the back of this one. All right, I this one I used vintage photo to distress the edges and to decorate the back. I'm gonna leave that one as is and call it done. This one I used frayed burlap to distress the edges and to color the back. And now that it's dry, I wanna use this stencil to make it look like a tree. And I've taped this section because I don't want the, the dots to come through. I'm using vintage photo over the frayed burlap, so hopefully it gives me a good result. Now for the reveal. Oh, perfect. Perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. Yes. Alrighty, ready, right? So this is dry now very small speckles of copper on there. I also speckled some copper on this page in a couple of places just to kind of give it a little accent. This is dried. 
Good luck. Can't decide if I want it like this. Oh, I just realized it's backwards. <laughs> uh, whoops. Oh, well. I made it. It's going. Oh, and look at how good it looks. Yep. Okay. I don't regret it being upside there, being a mirrored image at all. So that's going to go there. Oh, I love it there. That looks so good. Awesome. And then my tags. Oh, they look so good. And I made this ticket. I used, um, so la oh, is it back in December for Defemorember. Yes, for Defemorember, we were tasked to make tickets, and I made a bunch um, ticket shapes with my Cricut. And this one was actually like a light gray blue color, and it wasn't going to work. So I took the frayed burlap ink and the dauber, and I rubbed all over it. Then I stamped a ticket stamp on it in permanent ground espresso and on the back I dribbled a little bit of water so that it you got the frayed burlap does some crazy cool color changes when you use the oxide ink and water and so it's almost like those are that's pretty much the original color of this ticket that's yeah it's very close but I wanted it to go here. And it's so big that it won't get lost in that tuck spot. I love this page. <laughs> it's so cute. All the different colors work so well together. I do have to wait for this to dry before. Oh, it's, it's not moving. Sweet. I can move on to another page. But what am I going to do on another page? I don't know. Um, let's just kind of scroll, just walk around and walk around, wander around this book and see where it takes me. Mm. Hey, crafty, that's me. Cunning and deceitful, that's not me. Okay, for my next page... I'm choosing this one. And what I want to do is take this image of this beautiful dragonfly. I pulled this out of a calendar. And I want to make a fold out. Like so. Put a tab so you know it's a fold out. And I might make this a pocket as well. Or a tuck spot. And that way you can unfold it and see this beautiful dragonfly. Fold it back up. And I think it works really well with this page because of all the yellow. So I think that's what I'm going to do. First thing I need to do is back this on some sort of sturdier paper. One, because I don't want to see that it, you know, I don't want to see August in my March calendar. And because then it'll be sturdier. And yeah, so gotta figure out a paper to back it with. Something that is thick enough you won't see this through. So, like a coffee dyed paper won't work. Um, something with a bit of interest, maybe, so that the part I can fold it so that the flap. So the top one sticks out a little past the edge of the page, then that would defeat the purpose of the tab. So I guess the other side really doesn't matter. All right, I gotta figure something out. I'll be right back. All right, I think I'm gonna use this to back the dragonfly, but I don't wanna back the part that's gonna be glued down into the book. It seems kind of wasteful. So I think I might just go ahead and fold this the way I want it to go in the book. And then go from there. I'm just folding it in third, roughly. So 
to go like that. All right. That means I don't need to cover this part. And I could even use the back as journal space. Cool. So I just need to cover this section, which I think I will do with this paper. I don't want it to go right up to the crease, do I? Yeah, I guess I should take it right up to the crease because I'm going to flip it over. Okay. That, I need a tab. Don't want that to glue closed. I love it so much. It is so pretty. Okay, I think I have figured out what I want this page tab to look like. I have this piece of, oh, that looks gross over there. Let's color this. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I cut out a tab, a page tab, from a piece of cream card stock, the same cream card stock I cut out those die cuts on. Um, I just had it scrap sitting around, so I'm going to color it. I think I'm going to make it green on this side. And then on this side, I have this washi tape flower that I think looks so cute here. So that's what I'm going to do. First things first. I you I'm gonna use peeled paint distress spray. See now I don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't like it at all. Maybe another one will make me feel better about it. I guess I could have fussy cut the white and that would have made it look a little better. I gotta figure out what to do in here. Okay, I like this side better than this side now. Yeah. Okay, I figured out what I'm gonna put on this page. I've got this, so stencil negative. From when I was decorating pages, for inside this journal and I sprayed the stencil and then I you know turned the stencil over on a piece of plain copy paper and this is what I got and it's gorgeous and I love it and I'm gonna stick it right here and I think it will blend in beautifully it'll work perfectly with this little tab cluster thing I got going on so that's the plan. I guess dragonflies are becoming the unofficial kind of mascot in this journal. I've done a few different dragonflies. I love dragonflies. I mean, hello. <laughs> uh, my snail antenna. That's what I'm getting stuck on. That, that just makes the page for me. I really wasn't liking some of the, oh, I wish I had back, brought it back a little bit. But yeah, I think that brings it all together very nicely. It makes for really awesome journaling space. Yeah, that's done. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I could always see how it pops up. I could always use one of those paper clips. One of those modified paper clips and clip it closed. I may do that. We'll see. But there, I just gotta make up something for the pocket. Maybe a big tag. Maybe I will bring back out the prompt jars and make some more ephemera. Maybe I'll make all the ephemera. 
all the remaining ephemera with the prompt jars. So I think for now this page is done. I don't know what I want to do as far as ephemera for the pocket is concerned, but not every pocket needs something in it, right? At least not right away. So there we go. That's another page down. Moving on. What about you? You look interesting. You look quite interesting. Hmm. What could you use? What would you like? Sometimes I like to just go and do a few pages in a row at once because it just makes me feel good. Yes. Fantastic. It's all coming together. But you, something about you. All right, I want to work on this page next. It's this little like half page or partial page next to this. And I want to use this stencil here straight on. Let's actually do it like that. Maybe a little over. Yeah. And I'm going to use Rustic Wilderness. I'm going to take this stamp and some Distress Permanent Ink in Black Soot, and I'm going to stamp it on here. And it didn't stamp perfectly, but that's all right. Then I'm going to tear around it. Then, I think, I want to make, I want to cut in the inside too. So I'm going to take a wet brush, or a water brush, yeah, it's called a water brush. I'm going to take this water brush, let it get wet, and then... I'm going to wet this paper around the inside. So that hopefully it will rip easier. Hopefully being the keyword. And very carefully. Awesome. That worked just like I wanted it to. And then it'll look like this. And I want to stamp something else on a separate piece of paper and stick it in there. I have these stickers I got from the Dollar Tree. I wonder... Is it clear? You know what? I like that a lot better. Yes. Much better. Okay. The embossing was a fun idea, but I did not anticipate the way it was going to interfere with the Distress ink behind it. Okay. I like that better. And then I think I might use these negatives from cutting out the die cuts with my Cricut and make a few flowers using some Distress inks. All right, I'm going to use mustard seed and peeled paint, stress oxide inks, to make these flowers. All right. 
On this side, I might do a tuck spot. Actually, I want to use... All right, I've got that page done, but I want to use this somewhere as a tuck spot. See how that looks when it dries. All right, this page is dry. I'm not a big fan of what's going on over here. You can see the glue um, where it act reactivated the alcohol, or the alcohol, the distress oxide spray and tinted um, where the glue was and it was very obvious. So I sprayed some mustard seed and twisted citron sprays to kind of mask it a little bit. It didn't work. So now I think Okay, where did it go? Here it is. I think I might put this butterfly here. The concern is that it takes away from this, but it also hides that ugliness a little bit, so I can have it stick out over the side a little bit, but I want to color the back. And for that I will use mustard seed. I will take a tiny bit of vintage photo just to add a bit more interest for what's peeking around there, you know what I mean? And I'm just gonna hold that in place and that glue won't get in the way of my tuck spot. There, I think that helps a little bit. Maybe I should sand some of the shininess. Oh, it's a little late now. Oh well. I could do a smaller butterfly here, potentially. We'll see. I don't want to overshadow the beautiful pocket. I also, like, I sprayed a little bit more coffee and I took the mustard seed stamp, um, the mustard seed pad and just kind of Hit it along the fringe so that the fringe was colored. I thought about trimming it in lace, but I don't. It just didn't sit right. You know what? That looks better than I thought it would, in through the camera. So cool. I'm gonna put that aside to dry. And in the meantime, get out of my way. During December, I made this snippet strip. Little mouse was the animal of that day, hanging out there. And I thought it would make a cool tag for this pocket. Actually, I should have not moved that yet. I'm gonna use this bottom section. All right. It's a little dimensional, so I think it'll go well in this pocket and it's very grungy. Now let's see, as far as size goes, this is another pocket. I want to cut it off before that, or I want to include that little pocket there on the tag. So I think maybe cut it here. No, maybe not that high. Maybe here. A little pocket? No, it's just a little flat. And then I can put some tickets or something in that. And I think it looks pretty good in comparison with this page. So now we can pull this and put this aside to let it dry. This was made on parchment paper. So I need to back it. But before I do, I want to sew across the top to keep that sewn together theme going. Did those pull out? Weird. All right, so I'm gonna sew across the top to make it a bit more cohesive. And then I'm gonna back it on some dark brown cardstock from that pack I just got from the thrift store. 
So I'll be back once that is all taken care of. Okay. Um, while I was off camera, I added a few rhinestones to this butterfly. And on this, on this, since this is a pocket, I added two little tickets in there. Which don't really want to stay in there very well. There we go. And this die cut, I glued just on the stem and then in the center here so that it's very dimensional. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. These are all loose and stick up and I thought it worked really well, especially when it goes in the pocket because it pokes out. Yeah. I also took the, which one is it? The peeled paint distress spray and then um, opened it up so that I could use the tube part of the sprayer to just kind of like splatter little, little bits of green around. Um, this, some places in March are still very um, brown lots of growth still hasn't occurred where I live it's different but I wanted this to be kind of a statement to that that like not everything is growing yet so little spots of green here and there so that's what that was for all right I think uh, that's gonna end this video I'm having so much fun in this journal this is everything I hoped it would be. It's my color scheme. I'm, yeah, I'm just loving it. Loving it. Loving it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this at least almost as much as I am. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.